welcome back to the channel. To those that are new, my name is Sihle Mohorosi. What we do in this channel is discuss all things uh, medicine and student lifestyle. And as you can tell from the video title, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my journey as to how I got into medicine. So hopefully someone who has applied uh, to get into medicine watches this and can hopefully draw some inspiration and, um, and motivation. But the most important thing that I really want you to take out from this video is that your dreams are valid and you can become whatever you want as long as you put your mind to it. And most importantly, life is not a race. What may take you two years to achieve can take me three years, it can take another person seven years. Uh, most of the time we put so much pressure on ourselves because we constantly compare ourselves to other people, we, con we compare our successes and we also set deadlines and time frames that at a certain age I must have uh, achieved A, B, C and D and you know sometimes it, it doesn't work out that way. So yeah, I just want to say to all of those that are applying, just keep pushing, yeah, it, it, it will not be in vain in the end. Okay, so without wasting any more time, let's get started. So, why medicine, you may be asking. So, I think what initially sparked my interest in medicine was the fact that it's one of the most challenging uh, courses, or so I heard. Um, so, naturally, I'm someone who likes challenges. So, if you tell me something is impossible, I almost probably want to try it out first. So, yeah, let's just backtrack to high school. So I did my trick in 2016 and I didn't do as well as I had wanted to do at the end of the year. So I ended up getting two distinctions, uh, Life Sciences and Isuzu. But my science was bad. I got a 59%. And those of you who are applying to medicine or have applied for medicine before, you will know that you need to get a minimum of 60% in all your core modules. Uh, in order to do medicine and that includes physical sciences, life sciences, um, mathematics and English. So yeah, obviously when I got my results I was devastated. I just saw that yo, my dream of becoming a doctor is vanishing right in front of my eyes. So I obviously felt bad, I felt like I could have done better but um, feeling sorry for myself was honestly not an option. Because, you know, one thing I've come to realize is that whether you feel sorry for yourself or you blame yourself for something uh, that you have no control over, Oksala, your life is going to go on with or without your feelings. So that year I had only applied to two universities. Big mistake. So I applied to two universities and I applied for medicine as first choice and pharmacy as second choice. And... For those of you that don't know, pharmacy is just as competitive as medicine, if not more, because I know they take even less, a less number of students in pharmacy. So I obviously got rejected for both, uh, for both study choices at both institutions. So now that meant I had no university to go to. So what I ended up doing is I did a, a change of mind application at UKZN, because it's one of the institutions that I had uh, applied at. So I did a change of mind and a change of mind is like a late application. So I did that for BSc Biological Sciences. And by the time I got accepted into the BSc program, I was already a couple of weeks behind. So I ended up not uh, doing the course. And I just decided that in 2017, let me just take a gap year. Yeah, so I took the gap year in 2017 and I must say, what the gap year did, it just reinforced my love for medicine. It made me realize that I want this more than anything. And I also just got to do some research on different ways I can get into medicine. And I did my research on all institutions uh, um, that offer a BSc. Because a lot of people were advising me to do BSc. So I'd already decided that I'm going to do a BSc. Um, before I do a medicine, uh, before I do medicine. So as I was doing my research, I stumbled upon Sfakomahato Health Sciences University. And what I liked about the institution was that um, uh, the medical students and the BSc students are actually in one campus. 
And for me, at that point, I just felt like, you know, I need to be in an environment where where I can constantly see students in scrubs and, 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 and clinical codes every single day just for motivation, you know, and to constantly remind myself that, you know, I'm not where I want to be, but one day I'm going to reach it. So I ended up applying at SMU for 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 BSc in Life Sciences. And then I got in in 2018, uh, BSc Life Sciences. The first year experience was not bad. It was, it, it was okay. Uh, first six months was a bit challenging because, you know, we are still new uh, to the whole university environment. You're still adapting to the way things are done at university. And even the study, your, your study methods change when you're in university. You're not, mm, some study methods that worked for you in high school, suddenly they are not working anymore. So it was a challenge, but, um, you know, I, I managed, I managed. But one thing I really liked about first year is that, you know, everyone was so optimistic and hopeful. You know, we all had that thing that, um, you know, we're going to do this PSC thing for one year. Then next year we're switching to medicine. And it turns out it's not as simple as, as that. It's not easy. To switch into medicine so I completed the first year of BSc with four distinctions uh, in organic chemistry physics algebra and calculus but I didn't make it to medicine I'd only applied at SMU for for medicine the following year but my average was not enough I had an average of 73 percent and they wanted 75 for you to switch to medicine so that meant I had to carry on and do my BSc in 2019, do my second year. So I then enrolled for the second year. Second year, I think that's when depression started kicking in, because that's when, you know, started asking myself if this is ever going to happen. You know, I was thinking that you've been applying 2016, we regret. 2017, we regret. 2018, we regret. So now it's now 2019 and I'm still not in medicine. So I was obviously starting to get some panic attacks and having a lot of doubt, um, a lot of doubt. So initially I had uh, registered physiology, biochemistry and biology as my majors uh, in second year. But then I then came to a realization that I stand a better chance of getting distinctions in in chemistry than in physiology simply because um, with chemistry at least I had done it in first year and I did well in it but uh, with physiology it was a completely new concept so I wasn't really willing to gamble with my chances of getting into medicine so I remember sometime in in so sometime in, in Feb yeah first week of Feb I, I changed physiology and I took chemistry as my, as, my, as my major. And I think that was the best decision I ever made. Because uh, me and chemistry, first semester, we were, very, we were very good friends. And as a result, I did well in that semester. But the funny thing is, <laughs> I really didn't expect to do well in the first semester because it was a very stressful semester. And it stressed me to a point where, you know, I stopped attending classes. Like the only time you'd see me on campus was if I had a tutorial, a practical or a semester test. Other than that, I was just at res self-study. So I just didn't feel like uh, going to campus. Whenever I attended a class, I just feel demotivated, uh, you know. And uh, it will it would be just a constant reminder that yo you're still in this BSc you're still not in medicine, so for me staying at res and self studying really worked for me, and at the end of the first semester I managed to get distinctions in all my modules, that was organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, biochemistry, and biology, so I completed the semester with an average of seventy seven point five percent. Okay, so I had applied at the University of Pretoria and I remember the applications opened in the first week of March and by the first Friday I was already done <laughs> with the application. Um, the application process was very simple and what I liked about it is that they didn't require any additional things like I wasn't required to write NPTs 
or or what a motivational letter or anything like that. All they asked for was my metric marks and and my BSc transcript. That was it. So I applied by the first Friday I was done and then they were silent. In March from March until July. They were just silent. UP was not responding or saying anything. And then in July, that's when they started to, uh, uh, giving out emails saying that by end of July, we must submit our media results. So when the media results came out, I obviously submitted. And three weeks later, it was the 27th of August. It was a Tuesday. And I remember sitting at Riz and then uh, I was just thinking that, you know, I applied at the University of Pretoria, but they haven't. Uh, they haven't really uh, said anything. Let me just check the portal and see if my admission status has changed. And as I logged into the portal, it was there. MPCHB, you have been conditionally admitted. Yo. So, uh, I was so, so, so happy. The feeling was just an extraordinary, amazing feeling I cannot explain. But what I did after reading that, immediately I just took a taxi. So I stayed at South Point, and South Point is like 10 minutes away from uh, UP's medical school. So I, I took a taxi to the medical school, and I went to the admin, and I asked this lady, I'm like, uh, my UP portal says I've been conditionally accepted. Please check on your side if it's not a mistake or anything like that. Because I was still in denial. I was like, yo, before I get excited and tell anyone, let me just make sure this is legit, this is really happening. So she asks for my student number, she types it in, she checks on her side and she looks at me and smiles and she's like, no, it's not a mistake, you are in, but you have been conditionally accepted. So she explains now what a conditional acceptance is. So that meant now I had to get an average of, I had to maintain my average. So since I got in with an average of 77.5, that meant even in the second semester I had to maintain uh, more or less the same average for me to keep my space. So yo, I was so excited after that. I was so happy that at least I'm one foot in to medicine. So whether I made it in was completely now up to me. Um, it was solely up to me and how hard I work. You know, the funny thing is that after getting this conditional acceptance, it just felt like the devil was working overtime to make sure that I lose the, the offer. Because firstly, there was this one module, physical chem. That module was just giving me nightmares. It was the most difficult module that I've ever done in my life. And best believe getting a 60% in physical chem was equivalent to a distinction. So I was worried that it was going to drastically drop my average. And as if that wasn't enough, UP requested to get my results on the 13th of December. That time, we were, we, we were only expecting to get our results sometime in January because there had been a protest. So there was a delay in, in the releasing of results. So now I was stressed about that. That yo, UP had clearly stated that if I don't give them my results on the 13th of December, the spot will be taken away from me. So it was hectic. But fortunately, they were very understanding. I just had to email them uh, an official document from the university stating that the results are going to come out at a later stage. So everything was then fine. As, and I was thinking, you know, everything is good. At least now UP understands and then I miss an exam. Final exam, biology, it was written at 9 a.m. In the morning, I slept. Yeah, well, the devil was just working, guys. The devil was working. I slept during, and I was overly prepared for that exam. I had slept early. I was ready to write it. 9 a.m., I woke up at 9, and the exam was starting at 9. And mind you, I'm staying in Pretoria Central and the university is in Harangua. So there was no way I was going to make it in time there anyways. But, you know, God came through. God really came through. Because I had already, at that point, I just thought, you know, I'd just say, you, you might as well just kiss goodbye to this um, conditional offer. So I was like, ah, it's fine. I'll just try again next year. And I'll, I'll just finish the degree and try again next year. But God came through, you know, I was able to write a deferred exam and 
I did very well and my results came out in time. Usually the deferred exam, I was so happy the marks you reached UP um, at the right time. And fast forward to January 2020, I received a call. It was the first week of January, some that week of the 6th to the 10th, somewhere there. I receive a call and then it's, it's a it's a lady from UP. She's like, hey, we just want, I'm calling from UP. We just want to find out if you're still uh, keen on studying medicine at the University of Pretoria. And yo, at that point, I just stopped. I asked her, does that mean I'm in? She's like, yes, and you can register. Yo, and guys, that's how my life changed. That's how I got into medicine. That was just my journey. If anything, I just feel like God is the one who just carried me throughout this whole journey. So if there's anyone watching this video uh, who has applied to get into medicine or you have been applying for many years, maybe getting rejected, yeah, the main message behind this video was just for me to show you that if I could do it, you can also do it. So my advice to you is just trust the process, do your best and let God take care of the rest. And remember to just speak your blessings into, into existence. I believe there's power in the tongue and your words shape your future, they shape your results, shape your progress, your mental and even your physical health. So yeah, I think this is where I'm going to stop this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, uh, just leave, leave them on the comment section down below. And till next time, see you soon.